Hello everybody and welcome to beautiful Wales, Snowdonia to be more exact and to be more exact than that I can't remember the name of this place, I've never been here before, I'll put it here. It's ridiculous that I've never been here before on the basis that it's the best view I've ever had of my favourite mountain in Wales, Trivan. And uh, it's basking in sunshine at the minute, pretty rare and hopefully in an hour or two it'll look lovely under a golden sunset. However, in the meantime, I've got nothing else to do, so I thought I'd very quickly talk a little bit about dynamic range. Now, if you've tuned into a video about dynamic range, congratulations, particularly if you've not done so on the basis that you need something to help you fall asleep. Dynamic range, I think, is, is quite a boring topic, but I've made videos about it before and I've been asked about it quite a lot recently, so I thought I'd talk about it again, because in the past two or three years, my views on dynamic range have changed quite considerably for my own photography, and that's because two or three years ago, I was a commercial composite photographer. I stitching images together for marketing campaigns and things like that and when you're stitching images together it's quite difficult in the field to match exposures exactly because the photos might be taken on different days in completely different places completely different times of day all that kind of thing it's impossible so you need to consider dynamic range quite often because if you're going to match the shadows and if you're going to match the sky and stuff uh, dynamic range is important if you don't know what dynamic range is basically it's the the breadth of light that a camera can capture. So if a camera can capture really, really dark shadows at the same time as capturing detail in really bright skies, you'd say the camera has good dynamic range. Dynamic range, if I keep saying dynamic range, I'm gonna lose my mind. Dynamic range is measured in stops typically. And nowadays, if you have a camera that measures anywhere between 12 and 15 stops, then uh, that's considered pretty good. In fact, I think that's considered very good. I probably should have looked that up before I started banging on about dynamic range. Anyway, for a long time, dynamic range has been a, a big talking point when it comes to buying cameras, because typically in the past, cameras have not been as good at seeing different types and intensities of light as, uh, as humans have. And therefore, having a camera that could capture all the details that the human eye could capture has been uh, desirable to say the least. However, like I said, my views on dynamic range have changed a bit. And uh, now that I'm not compositing as much and I don't need to uh, match exposures between different frames and stuff, I don't feel the need to have umpteen stops of dynamic range anymore because where possible, I like to, to think of the constraints of a camera sensor as a positive. Also, you may have noticed that I'm dispersing me talking with uh, lots of B-roll of where I am because I'm aware that for some of you at least, this, this is probably quite a boring topic. But anyway, the only real point that I want to make about dynamic range is that I think all too often, lots too many photographers rely too much on dynamic range. And what I mean by that is not what a lot of other people mean by that. Um, a lot of other people moan that uh, people don't take enough care with things like their exposure because they know that their new modern camera has lots of dynamic range. And I'm not too fussed about that. I bracket a lot of the time, as many of you will know, uh, just in case I don't get the right exposure in the field. I'm not too bothered about making sure that I get absolutely everything nailed on correctly in camera. I don't mind cropping, like I said, I don't mind bracketing. I'd much prefer to bracket, go and get loads of photos, than take time to make sure that I've exposed correctly and all that kind of stuff in the field. Now, what I mean by an over-reliance on dynamic range is I think all too often people take photos of any scene and they'll get home and they'll push up the shadows and they'll bring down the highlights, regardless of what the scene is. And I think in many cases that can look good, but I also think in many cases that can make an image look quite flat. If you bring all the different tonal values in, if you bring all the detail up in the shadows and if you bring the highlights down it can just make an image look quite flat and contrast a lot of the time is great in photography. So if you look at say um, like street photography a lot of the time street photographers will use shadows and get rid of all the detail in the shadows to shape whatever else is in the frame to give context to whatever else is in the frame and if you were to bring all the detail up in the shadows obviously that wouldn't work. Uh, similarly with highlights the temptation a lot of time with a lot of photographers is to make sure that you've not blown any highlights and that you bring all the detail you possibly can back out of the highlights. But I think a lot of the time, if you don't do that, you can use the bright spaces in your photos as negative space to frame your subject, and that can work quite well as well. The only point that I'm really making is just to consider whether you need to bring up the shadows and need to bring down the highlights for each individual image. In some images, you might find that you don't need to. And uh, if you don't need to, you shouldn't, because a lot of the time, the constraints of a sensor can be seen as a positive rather than a negative. Oh, that's getting quite moody. I think I might take some shots. Time, me thinks, for a summit push up there, which is further than it looks, I think. It doesn't look that far in the camera, but I can assure you it's, it's a long way. 
particularly with my jelly legs. I, uh, I did a similar thing yesterday, so my legs are a bit, bit shaky. This is probably a good time to also thank the sponsor of this video, Lumix, who's G9. I'm very excited about uh, potentially getting some sunset photos with. Although, as glad as I am that Lumix are sponsoring this video, I'm more glad that they've made cameras that are nice and light, because I don't think I'd be considering a summit push if it wasn't for the fact that my two cameras and five lenses that I have with me are as light as they are, because, like I said, legs of jelly. So thanks to Lumix, I'm, I'm considering a bit more pain to get to the top. Cheers. <laughs> Well, I think with my sensible hat on, which this is, I think that should probably be my lot for the day. I should probably go down and try and get back to the car before it's completely pitch black so I don't kill myself. Uh, thank you very much for watching, even if you tuned in just to try and fall asleep. If you did that, I hope it helped and you're, uh, well, you're fast asleep. And if you didn't, thanks for watching till the end. And uh, I'll see you next time if I do get back to my car. I'll have to come here and do it properly at some point. Camp, maybe. Yes, I'll come and camp up here at some point and I'll, I'll make a video about that. Until then, wish me luck. Yes, made it back to the car before dark. Didn't even need my headlight. What a relief. Wasn't worried at all. Wasn't worried at all. Still fell over twice. <laughs>